Hello, I'm Trip Harrison here at Twyford Funeral Home in beautiful Manio, North Carolina on the Outer Banks. We're here with another video today in our series, What to Do When Someone Dies. The death of a loved one is never an easy thing. There's a lot of stuff going on. There's emotions and grieving and, and logistics that have to be handled and decisions that have to be made at a time when most people are emotionally compromised. So we created this series to look at some of those issues in a very non-emotional way by presenting some information that you can hang on to and use uh, when necessary and not have to start from scratch in doing uh, any research should you have to make these decisions at some point. Today's topic is very uh, small in terms of the scope. We're going to talk about uh, the cremains of a, a cremated loved one. Uh, that are received back by the family after the cremation process. Cremation started out years ago as being a fairly uncommon thing, and over the years it's become more and more popular for a number of reasons. Uh, it allows families to delay or, or manipulate the time of services more easily because they're not considering the decomposition of the body and things like that in the process. All they're doing is uh, uh, receiving cremated uh, ashes back and then they are deciding to do a service at that point at their leisure or when it's comfortable and easy for everyone to get together. So uh, we're going to be talking about what to do when the decision has been made to cremate and what to do with those returned cremains. And I will use that term cremains, which is the industry term for cremated human remains. So let's talk about them for just a moment. Um, cremated remains are uh, returned to the funeral home uh, in a container just like this one here. It's just basically black, uh, a heavy uh, sort of a composite material box that contains only the ashes and bone fragments uh, from your loved one uh, after the cremation process. Everything else is removed, part of the process which we'll discover uh, in, in more detail in our uh, cremation video uh, involves removing anything that's not naturally part of your loved one's uh, remains. For example, uh, if there's been joint replacements or metal parts or pens or pacemakers, things like that, all of that is removed and what is in here is truly uh, all that's remaining of the earthly uh, uh, portion of your loved one's existence right here. So. Um, what we need to know before we go forward and make uh, decisions on what to do with these cremains is uh, remember that re religious affiliation uh, may have a great deal to do with what is permitted uh, with the remains of your loved one, the cremated remains. Um, for some of you who do not follow uh, strictly any religious protocol, it's really just a personal decision. But for those that have a strong faith in a particular religion or denomination, it would uh, be important to know what their protocols are for human cremains and how to handle them. Just to give you a couple of examples, uh, for many years, the Catholic Church forbade cremation. Um, and then they, for many years after that, discouraged it, but allowed it uh, with certain boundaries, certain uh, things they expected in terms of what to do with the cremated remains of your loved one after they're received back from the crematory. And those boundaries still exist uh, in order to have the blessing of the church uh, in the Catholic faith. So the uh, Catholic Church's guidelines um, are that the loved one's cremated remains are to be uh, buried or interred or entombed in a sacred place, such as a cemetery. Um, the Catholic Church officially does not endorse uh, scattering ashes or keeping them on a shelf in the living room or um, anything like that. Their, their belief is that uh, those cremains need to be put in a place where that loved one is perceived to be at rest, at least in their physical body. So uh, if you are Catholic, you might want to consult with a priest uh, to determine what, uh, if any, updates have happened since my information, but I believe that is current. Um, and there are certain faiths that don't permit cremation at all, Islam and Orthodox Judaism, for example. Um, but we're assuming that by this point, the decision has been made to cremate your loved one and the ashes are returned to you, then what do we do with them? Well, you'd be surprised at the different things I've seen 
Since my funeral directing began in 1984, uh, it, it's just about everything uh, has been done with cremated loved ones' remains. Um, some families choose to scatter the ashes. Uh, in some cemeteries, there is what's known as a scattering garden, which is a section of the cemetery that's sort of like a, a sand pit, but it's opened to those who wish to take their loved ones' cremated remains and just spread them out on the ground. Um, that is a, a practice that's fairly common depending on the area of the country. Uh, some folks will just put the cremated remains, which as I said are, are given to the funeral home uh, in this container, they'll put them into an urn. And an urn is basically a, a jar or a container uh, where those human ashes, uh, cremains can, can go and be stored long term, whether it's in the ground, in a grave, or whether it's in a, a niche in a, or a columbarium, which are sort of mausoleums for cremated remains. Some people choose to have those remains in their living room. I've, I know families that pack their loved ones away in a box, but they have them with them, and it's all a matter of personal taste, unless you have some religious uh, um, uh, restrictions on that. So. In terms of an urn, it's a very important decision if you choose to, to inurn your loved one's uh, cremains. And most funeral homes, like here at Twyford and our location in Elizabeth City as well, we have a very large variety of, uh, of urns and, and cremain containers. You'll see just a handful on the wall behind me. There are literally hundreds of options uh, from beautiful wooden chests that look sort of like a a, 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 a jewelry box uh, to some that have themes on them. Uh, you'll see behind me the, the one, I guess it's over here, with the American flag on it, which obviously would be ideal for veterans or those who served our country in some way. Uh, and you'll, you'll see uh, just variations on a theme. We have stone urns that are made of marble, uh, some made of granite. Uh, we have a handful of urns that are um, very unusual that are very themed to a particular uh, uh, loved one's uh, interests as well. So um, these urns are adequate to hold all the cremains from anyone that has their uh, cremains returned from the crematory. So it's not as though uh, they're filled up until they're full and the rest are disposed of. All of your loved one's uh, cremated remains will be in that container. Um, everything metal and non-human uh, is removed before you receive those cremains back. Uh, other families will divide the cremains. Um, there are uh, devices for that sort of thing. Um, one of the things that we offer here, and most funeral homes offer, are these little things which are called uh, keepsake urns. Um, in my family, my mother was uh, cremated, and I have a large urn with her cremated uh, remains in it, sort of like this one. It's a little different uh, design, but the same idea. But my son, uh, her grandson, uh, has a little keepsake urn, which is about the size of a salt shaker. And he has some, I took some of the cremated remains, or had the funeral director take some of the cremated remains and put them in this keepsake urn, so my son will have something to remember her by and that's really the purpose of uh, having the cremated remains in an urn is a remembrance, a reminder of a life lived. And uh, it's an important thing, I think, in the grieving process to know that uh, your loved one is never forgotten. And uh, so this is an important step. Uh, some then, once they have the ashes, uh, or the cremains in an urn, they'll simply place that urn in their home on a shelf uh, uh, sometimes folks will put it in a special place in the house. I've seen uh, families that have a special table of honor with photographs and the urn uh, just to have a, a sort of a constant uh, reminder of that loved one's presence in their life. Um, some folks uh, choose, and particularly uh, the Catholic uh, folks, uh, one of the rules of the church is that um, the cremains be placed in a holy place, a cemetery, a columbarium, uh, some place that's permanent. And a lot, of, uh, a lot of churches and a lot of uh, psychology uh, texts refer to um, the importance of a common place for people to grieve. 
Uh, one thing about a cemetery, for example, um, regardless of, of cremation or, or just interment, is that uh, that's forever a place for your loved one to be remembered that's accessible to everyone. A lot of people believe that having the cremated remains in one person's home sort of keeps everyone else from being able to go and visit and pay their respects. Um, my father is uh, interred, he was not cremated, and he is buried in a cemetery uh, in Florida, and I go there on Father's Day, typically, and uh, just spend a few minutes remembering him and his contribution to my life. And so the fact that I can go to a place, and it's a beautiful cemetery, uh, that is peaceful and quiet, and I can go pay my respects, that's an important thing. Uh, cremation uh, does not prevent that from happening if those cremated ashes are placed in a publicly accessible place, but it's all personal decision. Uh, and some cremains, sadly, uh, are never claimed. When I started in the funeral industry in 1982, um, I was startled to find that we had at that funeral home over 100 boxes of cremains that had never been picked up by the family. They were just there, and some had been there for 15 or 20 years, and some are probably still there. Um, that's happened, and that's why we believe it's important to uh, think through the next step after, the cre after cremation is chosen. What's the next step going to be? What's going to become of those uh, cremains? So, because we don't want our loved one to end up in the closet at the funeral home waiting on someone to remember. Um, also heard some stories, and maybe you have too, about folks who have bought a home and uh, found cremains or an urn uh, abandoned in that home, forgotten, um, and they don't know who it belongs to. And fortunately, the identification tag that's included, the metal tag that's included with the cremains, will include information on the, the crematory that processed those cremains. And sometimes people can do research uh, through that number and through that identifying information if the firm is still in business and uh, locate the, the next of kin of that individual. But um, regardless, it's, it's a sort of a sad thing to think about someone being left behind, which is probably why many churches encourage that once the cremation happens to find a place to put that urn in a publicly accessible and memorable place like a cemetery or um, a columbarium or a niche, uh, somewhere where uh, they, it won't be lost and be forgotten. I think that's important. So um, the things to remember about placement are pretty simple. First of all, uh, remember that these cremains don't really represent the heart and soul of your loved one or the spirit of your loved one. They're just the earthly remains, um, and their purpose is to help uh, the loved ones left behind to grieve and ultimately to just remember, and as time goes on, remember all the positive, happy memories. Uh, and so the more accessible these cremains are to all the people that love them, uh, the better. Uh, secondly, um, the, the cremated remains of your loved one uh, are a way to honor their life and dignity. Um, so choosing a, a cremation container should be a reflection of what their interests were, what they enjoyed, what uh, um, was important to them. And it's, it's an important decision to make that should, have, uh, should be impacted by their interests. Uh, and the third thing is, uh, remember the generational impact of cremains. Uh, my mother, who passed away in 2014, uh, I, I'd like be, for her generations later of grandchildren, great-grandchildren, and offspring of offspring of offspring that have never met her, to be able to connect with her somehow, even if it's only physically by seeing and touching an urn that represents part of their history. These are all important things, and we don't want to make um, your loved one uh, a, a forgotten memory. We want to help them be a uh, remembered memory. Uh, so the last thing I want to show you are some other options that we have. For example, this container is a scattering urn for those who choose to scatter ashes either in a scattering garden 
or and here in North Carolina, we have a lot of uh, folks that choose to scatter ashes at sea. There are a lot of regulations and policies about this in different parts of the country. Some places don't even allow it at all, uh, but I think it's uh, something you should discuss with your local funeral director. But if you do indeed choose to scatter your loved one's uh, remains at sea and it's permitted, uh, they're put into this, uh, basically it's a type of a, of a heavy duty cardboard biodegradable uh, container. Uh, and this one is themed obviously with a beach sunset, it's very pretty, and the container is simply dropped into the ocean and the cremains will disperse as the container uh, degrades. So uh, that prevents uh, cremains from flying around in the air and landing in a boat and that sort of thing. We want to maintain the dignity of your, your loved one throughout this. So that's a little bit about uh, cremation option. We, we hope that uh, this has helped you in some way. Your local funeral home will help you make the decisions based on what's permissible and what's available in your area. From Twyford Funeral Homes in Elizabeth City, North Carolina, and Manio, North Carolina, I'm Trip Harrison. Thanks for being with me. We'll see you on the next video.